Ken got his PhD in 1974 from the University of Southampton in England, where he worked with Ken uh, Kenneth Bray uh, on two-phase turbulence jets. Kenneth Bray is a fellow of the Royal Society and is renowned for his work on, on combustion, and this was in the field of aeronautical engineering. Ken then moved back to Australia, we worked from 74 to 76 as a postdoc and a lecturer and collaborated with Mike Banner at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, only a few kilometers where he was an undergrad student at the University of Sydney in the late 60s. Then he moved to uh, Scripps here where he worked from 77 to 80 as an assistant research geophysicist and collaborated with John Miles. In 1980 he moved to Boston and worked at MIT as an associate professor and then full professor. He stayed at MIT until 1990. One um, and uh, when he was at MIT, he worked uh, actively in the MIT Woods Hole Joint Program, where a number of his graduate students at the time graduated from. Actually, he moved back to Scripps in 1991, and he's been a professor of oceanography here since. Over the past five decades, Ken has tackled problems in fluid mechanics with application to oceanography, studying in particular the role of ocean waves and air-sea interaction. What is unique about Ken's work is the remarkable range of different approaches that he's able to unleash of difficult problems like this. Um, his work includes theoretical development, laboratory experiments, the development of research of uh, experimental techniques, and field studies. Ken's contributions and accolades are far too abundant for me to go over them all here. Uh, so I'll give you an extremely short and non-exhaustive flyby of some of his contributions. He has published over 100 research papers, but, but more importantly than just numbers, the quality of the work that he, um, he has produced. Um, his contributions are far-reaching, deeply insightful, and in fact many of his papers became landmark contributions to the field. There's a few examples in the uh, 70s, perhaps because of his exposure to, to aeronautical engineering. During his PhD, he studied aerodynamic over surface waves um, and got interested in particular in the role of braking uh, his paper on airflow separation, which in fact combined experimental and theoretical approaches, uh, sparked renewed interest in the phenomenon. Um, in uh, the 80s, uh, he studied uh, internal waves uh, with um, his uh, graduate student, uh, Carl Helfrisch, who is actually uh, here today and will be giving a talk uh, later tomorrow. Uh, and then he started to attack the problem of, uh, of breaking wave. Um, and I think, it's, I think it's fair to say that his, uh, his paper with uh, Ron Rapp sort of redefined um, how we understand breaking and, and, and was a turning point for, for a lot of us. Um, one, of his, one of his former students joked earlier with me that the, the, the Rapp and Melville paper is the, is the one that we all like to reference, but none of us have read entirely. Um, <laughs> if you look at the page number, that, that beast is about 65 pages. Um, in the uh, late 80s is when he focused on systematic studies of uh, surface waves and implication of breaking, such as remote sensing and bubble entrainment. He also spent a year in sabbatical in, uh, in France in the late 80s where he worked at the large Coriolis platform in Grenoble doing experiments on Kelvin waves. This work was done with his graduate students, Gunnar Thomason, who actually is here today and traveled all the way back from Iceland to be uh, with us, which is great. Um, here is a photograph of his uh, research group at MIT. This photo was provided to me by Mark Lowen. Who is, that? who is here and, uh, and on the photo uh, also? Uh, it shows Francis Felizardo, Gunnar Thomason, Mark Lowen, Eric Lamar, and Andy Jessup. Gunnar Thomason, Mark Lowen, and Andy Jessup are, are, are here for the symposium. Um, and um, Andy will uh, give a talk, uh, I believe, tomorrow. 
After moving back to SIU, Ken continued his theoretical laboratory work and got involved in field work as well. He uh, wrote a review article that still serves as reference today. And uh, here's a picture of uh, him and a graduate student at the time, Alexei Fedorov. Uh, I think this is on Sprawl. This was provided to me by, by Alexei, who is was here and will be giving a talk later this morning. Um, and there's another picture of uh, Eric Terrell and I coming back from deploying some instrumentation of Camp Pendleton uh, with uh, Mike Ritter and Peter Matusov, who were engineers in the lab um, at the time and are both here today. It's great to see you guys. Um, in, uh, in the new millennium, Ken continued with important theoretical and experimental contribution relating, relating to internal waves and wave breaking, but um, more importantly, perhaps, uh, he used field measurements that he had made with Peter Matusov, actually, and, and made an important link between the data and the theoretical framework that had been proposed decades earlier by Owen Phillips. In my view, this link is a fundamental breakthrough and, in fact, inspired a number of other effort in the field since. More recently, while continuing on fundamental and theoretical studies, he dove deeply in field studies, making beautiful measurements from FLIP, and then recently using UAV as a new tool for studying air sea interaction. Um, here's a picture on FLIP of a former student, Peter Sutherland, who could not be here today, but assured me that he would come for the 80th birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, Ken, uh, has had a substantial uh, impact on the field and contributed to the advancement of our understanding of, of wave and breaking wave. But I'm, I'm not the only one to, to think so. He's a fellow of the Acoustical Society of America, of the American Physical Society, and among many other awards, he received the Guggenheim Fellowship and the Spurger Gold Medal from the American Meteorological Society. It is also important to mention that uh, Ken's uh, respect and esteem that he received from his colleagues go beyond recognizing his contribution in academia um, and, um, and, and extends to his, to his leadership abilities. So to name a few, he served as the chair of the SIO department, deputy director for education, deputy director for research, and director of the Joint Institute for Marine Observation, JIMO. Ken's legacy also lived with his students. During his career at MIT and ISIO, according to my count, Ken supervised 22 doctoral students. Many of them have successful careers in academia and elsewhere, and many of them have traveled here uh, to be uh, with us today to celebrate Ken's birthday and, and career. So Ken, your former students, graduate students, current students, friends, and family, we are all, all here to sincerely wish you a happy birthday and to congratulate you on an amazing career and to wish you continued success in career and longevity in birthdays. Congratulations. As a bit of a housekeeping here, during the next two days, uh, you will hear talk from uh, Ken's of uh, from Ken's um, uh, renowned esteemed colleagues, former students, uh, and friends, and we hope you can attend both days and enjoy the talks and, and the friendship and the collegiality. Uh, there are some programs uh, printed at the front desk if you are interested. Food and refreshments are also provided. And if you have questions, please see me or Luc Lennon or Nick Pizil. Can you guys please stand up so you can be identified? And while you're standing up, I want to say that uh, Luc uh, and Nick, while I'm standing here and talking to you, did the lion's share of organizing this symposium, so I would like you to join me in thanking them for this.